Hello, good night, everyone. I'm building a stat acrylic Alice layout keyboard from Switch Control. And let me check for the keyboard parts I ordered for the client. So we need the do rock stabilizers, and we have the keycaps right there, poly panda switches, it's here, hot swap PCB, yeah I got this one, and switch control Alice case, okay, I got everything here, I just need to bring them together. These are all the switches I looped. Okay. The microphone is right here. So this is the switch that I looped and let's put it on the side. And we have the case here. So this is the feet. Okay, we have well packaged. Yeah, I hate this package. I just get too much mess with taking things out okay and we have the sticker from squish control so i will use this box to ship everything back to the client Also, all the packaging, like this one. <clears throat> so before we are doing the case assembly, let's just try to loop the stabilizers. Crytox 205G0. And where's our loop brush? Okay, that's on the other place. Let me check whether clients want the Yeah, let's get the transparent one. I don't want the accent of the stabilizers took too much. So we are going to build the split backspace, so we only need four stabilizers, if I'm correct. So one, two, three, four, yes, that's the four, because we have split right shift. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three, four. Okay, too much. Okay, one, two, three, four. Five, six. Enough housing, we need more stamps. Yeah, it's probably easier to take enough out from this batch. So let's get some loop brush that's important for the loop. Yeah, be right back. Okay, so we got a loop brush. Let's get some loop from the cap. Yeah, we have plenty on the cap. I think it's on the transportation. So how's the night going for you? So the good part of this case is you can always take out the stabilizers and re-loop them. So if you find yourself has trouble first first time looping, you can always take out the stabilizers and try to loop it again.
Okay, let me ask the hunt one question. Yeah, how's everything going? I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, so I'm currently building this switch control Alice layout. I think I already built like two before, and this is the third one I'm building. And for sure, I'm doing my stabilizers work. No matter what, I always need to do that. Okay, so getting the while. I think tomorrow I will send you a huge package. <laughs> yeah, I think for wrist rest, that's definitely something. Like, you can use the TKL wrist rest. You don't need to really just use the matching wrist rest, but you never know. Sometimes the matching wrist rest just looks so good. And the TKL version doesn't look fit. But it's working. So if you just want the wrist rest, you can always just get the TKL for this kind of layout. I tried on my beer 65, it works fine. Yeah, I hope the package you receive will be super awesome to get because there are a lot of things that you uh like you mentioned to me about like how they are going and I actually didn't have time to loop them all so finally you have the time to try them self yourself yeah yeah also I probably need to make a new uh, build post service post because I kind of running out of client builds for the first time since February, which is pretty good news. Nice. Yeah, I think I've done, I don't know, maybe at least 10 because I at least do like two per week and after a month it's been at least 10 boards so pretty fun but remember how many kbd 75 i built <laughs> i think it's like four kbd 75 so i know everything about kbd 75 now you can call me the kbd 75 v2 king Yeah, at least today it's the different one. Yeah, and also it's good time to try uh, the Alice with arrow key and without arrow key. And to be honest, I, I actually like the arrow key layout. Even though I can use the key combo, the layer key to access the 
uh, arrow key, I still like the dedicated arrow key. Just because sometimes you have your right hands only and you want to do the arrow key. This is pretty neat to have something right there. But you know like the Alice layout with arrow keys, they're not a lot. But I think uh, Ma, actually I don't know how to pronounce that. But yeah, I think from the looking, it's definitely a good one. That's why like there's several friends, colleagues, they try to get the Alice layout. Just because how nice looking it is and also potentially useful. The only thing is the split spacebar. So it's really hard to find a good keycap set with split spacebar. <laughs> and you know, like for split spacebar, your EPBT Gok black and white has the space spacebar. So that's pretty compatible with a lot of keyboards. Yeah, I really like that keycaps. Okay, cool. So now let's screw the stabilizers onto this one. Yep, yep, especially the spacebar, like you can easily get that and work on this, this one, right? So that's pretty neat. Okay, so we need the enter key. I think Olivia Dark still works on certain uh, keyboards like the black one or the pink ones or some sometimes the PC board but if you make it the Olivia Light it will compatible with more key keyboards like this E White definitely great com combo the Olivia on E White Yeah, like if you have <coughs> black and white, it just like make your keycap set doubled. So totally great choice. Yeah, you know, for the price of Olivia Light, you can basically get both Olivia Dark and also uh, the Black and White. And then you can make uh, Olivia Light and also another one with the Black Mods and sorry, White Mods and Black Alphas. So another monochrome looking keyboard. Yeah, the most important part of Olivia is the accent key, and you have that in the Olivia Dark. But now it just like the price of Olivia Dark, uh, is around two fifty, but Olivia Light is around three fifty. Still insane. For keycap sets, were like thousands of extras. The price was still like three fifty for the base kit. That's insane, right? <laughs> yeah, do I owe you some uh, keyboard stand as well? So other than the keyboard dust cover. Yeah, I remember I have like 10 keycap, uh, keyboard stand. Maybe I should check the package. Yeah, that's something I want to send you as well. Nice, yeah. Like you have more and more keyboards, you definitely need that. 
yeah sometimes I find like I don't even uh, have enough space to put my keyboards on my desk and put them in the case is just so wasteful I bought so many keycaps key then I cannot use them or just like show them it's pretty wasteful How do you do? Oh yeah, you can put the packaging there. Like they are pretty neat. But maybe go the older ones. The older tray better than the new tray. New tray, if you put on the stands, everything will fall off. So you probably have to do on the old tray. Or maybe the JTK. Is the JTK one that you can show off? Stabilizers, we can always add more loop if we find they are rattling. So let's call it almost done. And we can always do that later. Okay, so next piece is the case itself. Music too loud. Okay, I don't want my other keyboard to take over my client board's glory. So the easiest way is to put it aside, which won't block us. I'm not using it to type anyway. Okay, so the time now is to unscrew them. Okay, this should be easy one. So yeah, you have the stand, you will have the dust cover, you will have multiple switches like Kiwi, Lilac, Tactile. OA. And I will send you the loop, send you the brush, send you what else? Yeah, I need to find a good packaging so that uh, things won't broke because dust cover and the stand were kind of fragile that it could easily get broken if they were not taken care so this is not the color of the case itself this has the protection layer Yeah, I don't think there will be a blue. Yeah, we will probably peel the layer the last. Yeah, look at how shiny this one is. And we probably need to screw the feet first. And before that, let's peel the protection layer of this feet uh, or the bottom layer actually let, let's do the feet first okay we have five screws we don't need all and 
Yeah, looks like we need to unscrew them so we can peel all the layers. I think peeling layers were kind of boring but also satisfying. Depends on what you really like. Okay, I need to turn off the heater. Yeah, working in the garage one side side effect is I have to make sure the heater is not turning on. Okay, working with multiple layers, which is not super fun. But look at how shiny this one is. So that's the two layers and looks like we need to get everything. So this part is the transparent one, so they have different protection on the acrylic. This could be the most time spent on the stream peeling the protection layer yeah I wonder like why you need to peel yourself even though like the case and everything packaging were well protected You need to peel the layers. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think the hot swap PCB for polarized will be interesting. I wonder if people will just sleep on that and whenever we have the extra cell for polarized coming through people will start trying to get those PCB because the, the, the one they get maybe, maybe they don't understand how to solder or they are not comfortable to solder so the hot swap PCB could be a hot But yeah, that's just my take. Maybe it won't happen like that. Because you never know. Look at sh how shiny this one is. This is the refle reflective version. That's why... It looks like a mirror.
Okay, I need to make sure they are aligned. So, aligned and screw in. Aligned and screw in. And screw from this side. Okay, looks good so far, and let's put the bump on. How's everything doing so far on your end? No problem. Yeah, I was actually calibrate something today on my monitor as well because I try to not I try to but my girlfriend try to swap the room with me again. So we have new office for both of us again. So this is reflective version of the acrylic which just shows all the mirror effect yeah i wish it could be easy to peel out the protection layer but it's not technically very easy okay my fingernail Stack layer by layer. So look at this one. It shines through, show my hand, but also kind of reflect differently on the lighting. Yeah, that's right. So the one you want, uh, the is that called UV lighting or uh, UV reflective? But, but the one you try to get were more expensive than the normal one. But this one, the Switch Control Alice layout, this looking has the same cost as the normal one. Yeah, but the one I get for you were definitely smaller. And this one, this is the full size. I mean, not cute anymore. Yes, I think stick into the like the price point of very budget friendly would be a good option. Yeah, I probably want to like surcharge you anything on that board. I probably just charge the material that I got and. Maybe just a little bit free on the assembly, like the normal one. I think now I'm just charging 20 bucks for the Prime E size. And you can always get my 20 off, 20% 20 off discount as my first and really good friend. I mean, first loyal customer and really good friend. That's what I will give to you lifetime
but yeah peeling off the layers on this one is definitely something that feels like really crazy especially on the feet because I can get you don't want to peel off the protection layer when shipping for your keyboard because this is a huge component but for this one man it's just a fit and they were already stacking together can you just peel that off for me like if you don't really stack them together it's piece by piece i get that but you already screw them together so what's the point okay we need uh the screws this side first so that's not the wooden case it's just like the protection layer so if you end up like peeling off the layer the real one will show off so stay tuned it will come out very different than what you see This is annoying. Okay, a little bit annoying, but I think it's manageable. Basically what happened is it's hard to reach the screws from this side. So probably you have to kind of like reach and screw together. Why not break those layers? Yeah, so that's the thing. And remember you have things like this one. Things like this one. Yeah, it's really hard and also take time. Like, I don't get it why you have to take so much time to do the layer peel off. Why you actually have screwed them together already. And just like get easy to break them again because of the screw and unscrew I mean unscrew and screw so they should just try to make sure like it's one go okay anyway let me put on the bump pump so we cut it down for the feet No problem. Okay, let's see how we can peel the layer off. Yeah, maybe let's just do the regular way. Getting off the scoops. Well, let's see if we can start peeling off from this angle. I hope this smartness doesn't cost me anything. If it cost me the board, I won't quite smart anymore. I hate the sun, to be frank. 
This is just the most annoying sound that I can ever hear. Okay, so the next thing is how do we peel off this layer? I'm actually dumb. You can easily get off the whole layer. Not really easy, but you can just get it off. Then just take whatever you can to peel off this layer. Yeah, just taking longer than anything to peel off the layer for this keyboard. Yeah, I wish I can spend some time to do the real keyboard working, like assembling the keyboard. But I got to take off the layer, unless the client really wants to do it. Okay, already taking me how much time? Like. 20 minutes to take take off some irrelevant layers still haven't been to the keyboard building yeah I thought this will be a quick one but looks like it's not uh, maybe one small tip is to take your time Yeah, I think maybe one thing I forget is to make sure the switch works on that PCB. I mean, I hope that works. There's no reason. Hello, so tonight I'm not a keyboard builder. I'm just a production layer peeler because all I done, I'm doing for the past 10, 20 minutes is to peel off the protection layer of this keyboard. So it can go really shiny because that's what this keyboard is supposed to look like. It won't look like this wooden looking because that's the protection layer. And I'm aligning the standoff to the keyboard layer and try to push them. And if I break this layer, I have to buy it again. So wish me good luck. I mean, usually it won't really hard to get of the protection layer, but yeah, I'm just not good at this one at all. Okay, so before we go too far, let's actually get the plate, which is the center layer of this keyboard. Actually, I don't even need to do this first. I probably want to test the switch. Okay, switch, switch. Where's the switch? That's some switch. For example, this stabilizer's key. Just want to make sure the holy panda stay in. Okay, yeah, it's stay in. It's fine. We have other four, other three. Another holy panda switch. Mm. 
another holy panda switch and the last holy panda switch on stabilizer so if you ask me why I'm just adding the switch right now without this plate it's because all the stabilizers keys position they don't need to uh, put the switches first and you don't need to put the stabilizers first either so it's actually good design and bad design so the good part of this kind of design is that you can always tune your stabilizers later or fix your uh, Y popping stabilizers and the bad design apparently very bad is it's not that stable so it's possible you are typing on that the switch were rotating I mean that's serious directly but I don't know practically it will do that or not yeah we will see from tonight's stream I'm just testing something for you which nobody knows yeah basically the PCB I got is from Sneakbox they were the maker of uh, Ava keyboard and also MGA, the Alice layout, affordable aluminum clays. So they were also the maker of the hot swap PCB. And the only thing about the PCB itself regarding this case is it doesn't have the split right shift hot swap socket so I have to solder some hot swap socket for it so that client can swap different switches later on how come I said to so much things nobody talked yeah anyway go back to uh, the plate so ideally the plate should hold the switch to see in place especially the stabilizers but for this plate in order to make the stabilizers easy to swap it doesn't have the securing point for the stabilizer switch so it end up making the stabilizers key harder to align if you are solder and easy to pop off if you were using hot swap PCB like what I do but I'm not sure how that will affect typing experience if it affect typing experience I would probably suggest to get a 5 pin holy panda for the client which apparently there are some 5 pin holy panda coming out to the market now Yeah, because 5 pin can definitely support the switch is better than the 3 pin. Okay, your keyboard protection layer pillar is still doing his job slowly and patiently without any complaint. Maybe you can get a cup of tea and watch me doing this one. And I don't know if it's called keyboard building stream or just some satisfying action stream. But yeah, like after you're putting off the layer, things look pretty. As long as you don't break it or scratch it. Especially for the plate, like all the switch location, it's really easy to get the protection layer uh, disconnected. Hello there. Finally, we get this layer. Yeah. You're right, this is a layer, this is not some air. You can see it, or you cannot see it. Finally, let's put on 
and let's put on the switches. So we're back. Oh, sorry, I hit the cam uh, microphone. Yeah, so the most important part of peeling the protection layer is done. Now you get this fancy transparent, not be able to look plate. And you need to adding switches, which we were, okay. I wish I don't get any. Okay, these are all the switches I, I will need to put in. They are the loops polypanda switches coming from job and I loop them with five bosses 3203. So they are super tactile and very loud. So if you have some roommates or if you want to work in the company without being fired, don't use them. So you want to ask how I got into commission? Well, simple things first, you need to have a good build yourself. If you don't if you don't do a good job yourself, it's hard to get commission. Because reputation is definitely the key in this industry or any industry. So how I started is when I built my tofu, 60%. I start selling them because I get into higher end keyboards. And in order to sell them, I basically try to marketing it by sending all the photos and also put other switch. So photos, that's the first thing. Video on YouTube, that's another thing. And I try to mod it a lot. Basically the keyboard were full of my creation. So I left a lot of content showing how I'm capable of modding my keyboard. And also the first client who got my tofu want to get exact same tofu on different form factor again so that he become my I don't know maybe it's the initial customer customer zero also I try to sell my other tofu and met Mr. Frosty in the stream and that's how I got my loyal customers who were my friend later on and they gave me a lot of good feedback around how to be a better keyboard builder and also keyboard streamer because if you can stream, that's actually a bonus hopefully that makes sense don't tell me this one doesn't support split backspace If this one don't support split backspace, I will cry. Yeah, it supports. Hey, you're back. I'm currently doing the most exciting part, adding switches onto the PCB, which I apparently try to mill max socket uh, some location like the split backspace because clients want that and also I make split right shift a hot swap version because 
that's another place that you have to do it on this keyboard. Yeah, there's no full backspace option. And you can already see the case color from this looking. I will probably put the bottom layer last so that you can get a better understanding. Okay. Let me make sure I got this right. Yeah, the case looks really pretty. Yeah, I think getting some great friends give you feedback like Mr. Frosty told me is very important. Like you don't want to just blindly building more and more keyboard without knowing how you can improve. And without knowing like how much you want to get charged because at the end of the day if it's your hobby it will get better and better over time but if it's just something you want to earn money on I don't know whether you can you know like take it forever okay I like the cow socket so that it won't break my desk mat Yeah, I built Miss Frosty a lot of keyboards and also he actually told me about his preference over time so that I don't need to guess because sometimes it's about the preference and you never know a customer's preference if they don't know their preference so it will be hard to do that Yeah, sometimes it's about the difference that you can make. Like maybe it's not the right one the first time you build. But there's no wrong one. It's just like what the people like most. So understanding the form factor by trying out different plates. So you can give better recommendation on what plate to get. And also understanding what the switches nowadays were most popular are also important because you don't want to just bluntly recommend switches that were popular previously so yeah keep the keep up with the trending of the market try different builds and know like what the best combination is And get to know small friends time to time so watching stream is another thing everybody knows because yeah like you are not going to build thousands of keyboards to learn you probably already learn something by watching other people stream first then at the end of the day you were trying to just use that as practice no not practice use those practice at the final client builds <laughs> yeah I used to just maybe charge very little for my work and I think Miss Frotty told me a lot about how to value the time so that's very important nowadays I feel like uh, the amount I charge were kind of reasonable for both me and also the client which clients find useful since I do switch looping and also keyboard building but maybe I will need to ask Mr. Frosty to help a little bit in the future I mean I trust his judgment and also his work yeah if you find such good customer, that's definitely a great way to start. But also I got other customers who were chatting with me about what they want, which were definitely better than customer who did not know what they want and only have questions. 
but it's fine to ask just questions. But sometimes you know, customer not only have questions, but they don't have budget. <laughs> That's the hardest part. Like you end up suggesting a lot of options, and they cannot afford even the basic options. So it will be a frustrated. Express. So the best thing you should clarify is what's your budget. The first time the client asks you their boards. How long have I been doing commissions? To be honest, only. Okay, I met Miss Frotis for like more than half a year. But uh, just like this amount of keyboard client build work, I think I just started this year, so less than three months. Thank you. You trust me about that money. I'm not running away, and I'm not ruining the experience. I'm trying to show everything on the stream. How I take care. Yeah, actually, another thing I find really useful and also, I mean, both useful and also satisfying to do is to, uh, like, just take the build whenever you build for someone and type for two days because the build on stream is one thing. The build off stream is another thing. Like, it's possible you type for one or two days, then you realize something went wrong, and then you spend some time to fix. Uh, you spend some time to fine tune that. That's the most important part of the build stream and the build uh, after build take taking care maintenance. So I find that most clients are okay with me taking one or two days to do additional work on the keyboard, and I find they are very important because I usually find something that's important. To handle before I send back the keyboard to client. Okay, so we got the PCB and the Holy Panda switches on this keyboard, and let's test everything together before we assemble them back. So I already. I mean, I didn't flash it, but I probably checked uh, if it's flashed. And I definitely make it split backspace, so I know it's working. Yeah, if you were handling such hot swap PCB. And you know how to mill max it, it becomes super handy. Now, the only thing left is to assemble the case, which were the best part. Okay, before that, let's definitely put on the feet. Stop peeling off the bottom layer and let you guys to see the real color of the keyboard. Milk 2%. Yeah, that actually sounds very interesting. So, yeah. It's just like different color on different lighting. Very interesting finish. And we need to put on the feet. So this is one direction. Super reflective. Probably will make me blind if I stare that too long.
Okay, so one thing you want to do is make sure you have the bottom stand off, like all the way, all the way screw in. So you don't need to do it another time after you build up the case. And you can then push off the fit onto the outer side. Make sure you don't really over tighten the screws because everything is acrylic very easy to break if you were over tighten it Yeah, I got so many things ordered for you. It's good and bad. Good for your mental health because so many good keyboard. Bad for your wallet. RIP. Yeah, sometimes you don't want to use the electric part. You just want to make sure you align them manually and screw them together. Okay, still it's thrown off. Okay, cool. So let's put the case together. Yeah, I want to do this step ASAP so I don't collect dust. So the PCB does not underglow, that's the only pitfall or only drawback of this hot swap PCB. But since we were using uh, this color, Piece, uh, like case, uh, the client don't really care about the underglow or at least when he knows about the underglow things he's okay with it he'd, he'd rather have a hot swap PCB than an underglow PCB because yeah you don't really need underglow for this color but for hot swap that will be super handy when you want to switch to other switch They are job holy panda. Yeah, job holy panda were just so great. But nowadays people were trying to get the U40 switches. I feel like they are also very good. They don't really need to get looped. That's another good part of uh, U40 because they were just so smooth out of the stock. So acrylic is definitely cheaper and very easy to manufacture. So any, uh, you know, like kind of DIY or maybe the first keyboard that you want to get for a very compact layout, if you go the acrylic, it will be much more affordable. So for example, for this, um, how do we call this? This is Alice layout. So any Alice layout won't be cheaper than this one. This version is around 230 shipped. I mean, excluding the switch and stabilizers and keycaps. 
but just the case itself is 230 so nothing can be the price point of that and alloy is definitely quality and PC is just different looking like it's probably same price range as the alu and different sun signature but at the end of the day it's about the preference so sometimes people like the acrylic looking okay the last piece yeah i like heavy keyboard as well so the polarize is definitely a good one for sure highly recommend to anyone who wants to spend aftermarket price polarize is the only one i would say worth the price aftermarket i think the price right now is around 500 to 600 yeah even they are kind of double the price of gb price but the GB price was just a steal. Like you cannot find any better keyboard on any price like the GB price for Polarize. Or even like Vega. That's why I always recommend people who are looking for options to see if they can kind of get the option on Polarize or Vega first. Yeah. So far it's still my best sounding board. At least my preference. You are still waiting for your brass BS65? Yeah, brass plate is definitely good if you were trying to get a tactile switch. For example, the Holy Panda. Or the U4T. I feel like if you want to use the tactile, or T1, or Cola, or Lilac tactile, or Kiwi, they were just so good on the breastplate. So alloy is not easily sound hollow if you have the form underneath and also depends on how the designer structure the keyboard. Yeah, just because I like if designer know how the internal works and can build the good internal, like it may not sound hollow at all. Yeah, so sometimes like the PC plate, a uh, PC board can also sound hollow if like designer just don't care about the internal. And sometimes the alu could sound really firm. Depends on how the mounting style looks. So yeah, it all depends. There's no like one rule against all. Looking for GBs? Yeah, so if you were looking, I mean, it depends on what you are trying to ask. I don't think I... Ah, okay. What you're looking for when looking, what? <laughs> so it's the question how, or what, or when, or who? <laughs> I'm so confused. What's the question? Okay, peeling off the last layer. Okay, let me throw off some trash. What you are personally looking for? Okay, yeah. Yes, definitely get a PC plate. I, I would say PC plate is so good. So look at this shiny, reflective, colorful keyboard. I 
I wonder what this too big hole is for. <laughs> yeah, so when I look at uh, Gupa, so the first thing I will look for is definitely the designer. Like whether designer already got some keyboard before or not. Yeah, could be. Maybe that's for the other cases, but definitely not for this case. So for this case, it may look a little bit weird. So the keycaps that we are using were from KBD Fence. They are cat keycaps. And I haven't tried this one, but I think cat keycaps were just sounding really good. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Jackie mentioned for the PC, uh, for plate, if they were just enough extras, they will probably sell after that. Yeah, so if you really want to know the details, I probably will know beforehand. So either ping me or make sure like you can get access from me. Okay, my bad. I don't really need to have this one because I this is split space bar, uh, split backspace. But this is a PCB. You don't really need a such big hole on the PCB. That's not something that really works. Okay, so if you want the FR4 plate, wait for my GB. <laughs> yeah, I will definitely organize the GB for the beer. It's on the PCB, yeah, it's not on the case. So that's super weird. Why you need such big hole on the PCB? I, yeah, I actually didn't notice. I didn't notice until I assembled this one because it's not super obvious. So FR4, yes, I will definitely order that and you won't miss it because I will definitely pin the bare row. Okay, back to the topic of what to look for GB. So if you look for the keyboard goodbye, first thing is about the designer whether they have reputation or not, that's the most important part. So I kind of follow like uh, AI03, Jiang, and several, you know, like designers, what they definitely are doing well, then you probably can get good key keyboard on them. And the second most important thing is whether they will have prototype or not, because if there are no prototype, it's a red flag. If there's a good prototype, but they are only running on their own, then uh, it's hard to say whether it's a good or not. Yeah, because you can never tell based on just like one prototype from the designer itself. And you want the streamer to have them and try to review them because streamer will building uh, like dozens of keyboards for a year so they probably have better understanding of how the keyboard works and the next thing would be what the mounting style because sometimes it's easy to copy other people's mounting style so you want to look at whether the effort they spend on mounting style is a good amount of percentage for the keyboard because sometimes people don't spend too much time on the mounting all the internal structure, they were just like trying to make it look appealing. So the example I were trying to mention is basically the Fuji 65. Yeah, I don't want to cut out, but I know how the designer didn't really pay attention to the internal. They just follow and copy whatever other people had, especially the flex cut on AIO 3's PCB and plate. They don't know what they are doing. And they also try to copy whatever on uh, iron 165 for the plate cut. Yeah, hopefully the Mac market will have the PC plate because people may not like PC plate. 
and always wait for people selling them. And plates are kind of reusable. It's not like you have to get first hand anyway. So the keycaps on this one is the cat, uh, whatever name, I don't remember, but that's from the KBD fence. Yeah, cat is definitely a like not very high profile, but pronounce uh, basically very good sounding. SA is a little bit too high, but still get really good looking. Yeah, the Fuji one. So this two red flag I see from Fuji group by. Well, actually I was in the QQ group. So that's the disclaimer. I don't want to say too much about what they discussed in the QQ group. But most of the flag I have received from that group is one, they copy the flex cut on the plate and they have no reason or no testing around why they make that cut. And if you look at any material on their group by, they don't mention that at all. Second, they have the sample color pink, not looking good, or at least the designer didn't really like the pink, but they didn't change it afterwards. So MT3 are uh, not higher than SA. MT3 is just like between the cat and SA. So I like MT3 PBT's texture because it's a little bit um, texture and that's just right on the right amount of texture. Like you don't want too much texture, but you also want some texture. So I think the whatever cut uh, MT3 were on the good amount of texture for PBT keycaps. Yeah, so talking about other than what did I talk about? Yeah, cat has no texture. So if you like textures, kind of get the empty three. But if you don't like textures, Fine, you don't need to get textures. Okay, we need another 2.25. I think MT3, yeah, it's a good profile. It just like, uh, it has limited looking. So that's the only thing. And also most of the key caps right now were designed by Mito. Not many people design cat. That's another piece I find not super happy about. I mean, I, I wish we can have more designer working on that. Yeah, cat is definitely worth one. So, you know what? Uh, I'm actually sending one to Miss Frosty, but if you don't want one, I have one for sale. <laughs> yeah. Not gonna change too much though because I'm just selling at cost. Okay, uh, yeah, just trying to find some non-matching symbols so it then duplicate themselves. Yeah, basically I'm trying to get off my MT, uh, MT3 DVTTY because I'm having another MT3 coming and I think only one is enough for me. <laughs> Uh, is this one good? Okay, yeah, I think that's good enough. Okay, we need another one, yeah. Yeah, so the thing about hot swap is every time you pull the switch, uh, pull the keycaps, 
the switch may come off on this hot swap though because the switch is not secured in the plate yeah that's the name cat dp0385 <laughs> Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. I don't know about how the name works here. And looks like we can have some accent. Shall we go to accent? Yeah, let's go it. Won't hurt. Like it's not like a super weird accent. Anyway. The name is just so bad. Yeah, if it's called like cat uh, placeholder, it's probably even better. I don't even know. A uh, cat, no second row because it has no sub legend, not sub legend, but it has no symbol on the number. So if you don't really know the number, uh, know the symbol, you cannot type on this one. Yeah, so other than the prototype, uh, like the effort spent on mounting, because that's like, yeah, everybody wants to have a good keyboard, looking keyboard, but the one you look is already there. So there's no difference when you uh, see like what change can change from that keyboard group or not. So looking is already there. Oh, we still have the QC pass. Pass QC. So probably you want to peel it off. If clients, you see this one. Okay, let's do some typing tests before I jump further on the group by stuff. I mean, it's always a really long topic to talk about group by. So let's do a typing test first. Monkey type. Yeah, so we got this keyboard built. Uh, this is the acrylic stacked, uh, stack acrylic Alice layout from Squish Control. And I'm building this with Holy Panda. And the plate will be just the acrylic layer. And the keycaps were CAT DP0385, thanks to the chat. Let's see how this sounds. This is really loud, <laughs> but sounds actually not that bad. I think the cat keycaps just make everything sound nice. So it's like cheating, but sounds actually not bad. Uh, let me just do the mods typing sound as well.
it's very how do I say that so the sound doesn't really go the hollow side I think it's because of the acrylic it didn't really have the metal uh, echo and also it's like not really far away from the bottom of the case to the PCB so it's actually very compact if you look from the side it's very compact uh, my spacebar has some springing pin yeah uh, maybe not a spring this sound better now oh yeah it could be just this like maybe a little bit rattle so the good part of this keyboard so first thing I haven't add any more loop from the back of the uh, spacebar stabilizers so one thing good about this keyboard is you can always take out the stabilizers without taking out the plate or disorder or maybe taking out all the switches this is just like the space that you can already do and then I probably just want to add some loop yeah I just have a syringe to insert some yeah I'm just getting some dielectric grease into the stabilizers That's an easy way to try fix your stabilizers first. Because I just didn't add enough loop this time, I just want to see whether I can either fix or tell before I spend too much time on that. Now we can check out whether it's getting better and I probably can do uh, other stabilizers as well. But yeah, stabilizers fixed. You don't really need to take out the plate and switch. Okay, I think it sounds better with some more loop. Cool, I think if you really want to compare very two different keyboard sounds. <laughs> uh, so this one is the stack acrylic on tactile with cat profile. And this is totally a different word. The gas key mount, aluminum plate, uh, aluminum case, PC plate, linear switch, and GMK keycaps. So nothing compares at all. <laughs> so this is the sound of this one. And this is the Beer with competitor switch. My opinion as well. I mean, compared to price, this is probably double the price of this keyboard. So it, it's not really on the right comparison, right? But personally, I definitely like the bear. It's just because of the gas key mount with PC plate and the completo switch I built. And the GMK keycaps were just, you know, like the solid option that you want to get some consistent typing. But if you were looking for a more affordable and readily available Alice layout, 
this one would be really nice. Well, this is good opinion. Holy Panda have shorter trouble. Uh, trouble. Yeah, it's really hard to see. So, but the, another thing is like. Uh, the switch is not fully seated on the plate because this one has the 4mm plate basically the acrylic layer so the switch itself is not fully seated and on this spacebar, so if you look at this one okay it's not even on the plate so this one, switch with the plate, plate doesn't even cover any of the switch. So technically, this spacebar is kind of plateless, and because it's like one uh, two point seven five view, so it has very less support. So the rattle, uh, the rattle on that, could be much worse than the other keys. Yeah, I don't know if they have shoulder trouble as well. So that's something I have to look up. But yeah, I would definitely try to use this keyboard for a day or two and see how I can tune that better, especially the stabilizers. But there's nothing I can do right now for you know the stripping switches on uh, this PCB. So we'll see how uh, maybe the clients will be able to get some 5-pin Holy Panda to make it more secure. Otherwise, yeah, so the thing is like, okay, I don't know if camera can focus. I'm always just doing my... So when you press down... Yeah, I'm not sure if you can see it but the switch and the plate were not fully secured. Actually, the plate, uh, the switch and the PCB were not fully secured. And because like the plate itself is not supporting this switch at all. So yeah, sometimes if you have a different keyboard design, it may not work perfectly on certain switches. So that's about like whether it's a great keyboard versus it's a reasonable amount uh, price keyboard. Hmm, that's uh, something I probably yeah, for this one, it's interesting to check. Yeah, there's definitely some gap. Let me check if I can even fully push the stabilizers in. Yeah, maybe after you like do left side, right side together, it can get better. But yeah, still, the switch itself is not, you know, like very securely held by a plate. So that's why, like, if you type on the left side, the switch kind of like going left, and when you type on the right side, switch kind of like falling on the right side. So if you type on the middle, it may be fine. But on the type on the side it definitely feels like going to the side yeah because of the stabilizers won't hold that movement yeah technically it's not very stable so even the stabilizers cannot fix it it's just because how this pcb and actually not the pcb problem it's the plate or even just like the case design and i think it's about some shot for a this case design 
when you consider how switching out the stabilizers easily. So it's trade-off. So I will not recommend such mechanism usually. Like if you have um, seen some keyboard like mode 80, that's also something like that. And I'd rather have more secure way of holding uh, the switches rather than having a easy way to switch out the stabilizers. So that's some trade-off that if you look at the key keyboard, you want to consider which one you try to optimize for. Yeah, so overall, I think at least the cat keycaps definitely save a lot on the sound because if you were just using the normal cherry, it won't sound that deeper. It could sound much more like, you know, flat and loud. But for this cat keycaps, just make the holy panda sound much deeper. Okay, cool. So this is pretty much for this keyboard build. And for whatever I talk about the goodbye stuff, I think overall, yeah, the most important part is still like the designer, the prototype, the streamer review, uh, the time like designer spend time on for the mounting internal design and also like for each iteration of the prototype what the designer is trying to change, whether it they just try to change the aesthetics based on, uh, you know, customer's uh, preference, or they were changing how the internal works, whether it's feedback from uh, themselves or feedback from streamers, how do they address all the feedbacks? So one example I look for, uh, I find for this BS65, um, the stream on like, the beard definitely shows something that can be improved on and I already see those like feedback get addressed and the production version get more improved on the prototype version. So that's something you want to look for. Yeah, pretty much everything about the stream and on Wednesday, I will build a UTD360C. It's a TKL keyboard and it were only available in China before and I think they were opening up some US group buys later. So if you want to know whether you uh, it's worth getting that keyboard, um, remember to ch like chime in on Wednesday, the same time. Yeah, good night everyone. Have a good night and good day tomorrow. Okay, thank you, yeah, so if Holy Panda has that short travel, then probably we I need to take a look later on how to get the stabilized fully seated. Yeah, that's a good one. Always learn something. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay, one thing from last stream is I probably should try to uh rate someone. Actually I haven't used any rate before, so let's see how rate works. So channels, yeah, I don't see any channels that, okay, just watch the Twitch front page to see if there's any keyboard building stuff. Okay, I like this rebuilding unicorn because I like unicorn. So let's just read that one. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for tuning in.